on understanding the neural circuits of motivated behaviors and how we have emotion, even though emotion is this intangible internal state. Um, I think that this is sort of the core of what life is. And life can be more than that. But I think at the core, we are working through our environments to seek rewards. And that we've had to adapt to the environment and I think that is the essence of survival and also the core of life and it doesn't necessarily need to be um, so stripped down of course there are all these other cognitive components that can interact with our motivational states but when I think about the meaning of life it's what drives us to behave and exert any voluntary actions and what uh, those internal drive states are um are uh, how those are represented is something that i'm really interested in and so uh, you know, go ahead uh, so basically the problem that i have is that from an evolutionary standpoint a lot of the super complex behaviors that we are involved in in a day-to-day -day basis do not necessarily increase our fitness so how do you explain that we agonize over i don't know a paper that didn't get accepted and you know our kids not sharing and uh, you know, all kinds of like really cool things that are just so disconnected. So uh, actually I would, so actually I don't think those things are actually that disconnected. I mean, if we think about um, the most, many of the most successful species on the planet, a lot of them have very complex social hierarchies and social structures, and that is key to survival. And so we've evolved to have um, components, neural circuits that support um, social homeostasis. And this is something that I'm really excited about studying right now. How do we maintain stable social structures um, even in the face of changing environmental conditions or changing internal composition? And, you know, getting a paper rejected or, you know, getting your children to get along with other kids, this is all part of being socially Adapting, being part of a social structure that supports us is essential to survival. And if you can think about from from an evolutionary standpoint, the, adva the advantages of being part of a social group. Not only are there advantages in terms of foraging and, and safety, homeostatic, um, you know, even like energy balance and and uh, th thermoregulation. You know, animals can cuddle together in the winter. Um, you know, we we gain so many different things from our social groups. And so actually becoming a desirable member of a social group is actually very important for um, survival. And so it makes sense to me that these are the things that, that we agonize over, especially since in our day and age, you know, we are very adaptable. We're, we're, we're very um, versatile animals and our brains can adapt to the changing environment. And in our environment now, uh, acceptance in social groups is perhaps paramount since, you know, many other predatory threats are no longer um, things that affect us. So indeed, uh, I think that our social belonging is something that is core to the meaning of life. So I have a slightly different question, uh, which is um, everything you've said so far still assumes selection is happening at the individual level. And yet some people will kill themselves to take a cool selfie. And sure, that might improve their social standing, but their reproductive fitness is dramatically reduced after dying. So my question is, uh, what about group selection? What about selection for genes that make the species more successful and behaviors that makes the species more successful by sort of inventing new kinds of art or science or engineering in this push to make ourselves more, you know, respected by our peers? Some, somehow this actually favors the survival of the whole species and the genes that we're selecting for in that quest for belonging or that quest for respect are not necessarily going to, you know, uh, be uh, selected at the individual level, but they might be selected at the species level. Do you see that as playing a factor in this emergence of these super complex behaviors or do you feel that individual level selection is sufficient to explain that? Um, no, that's that's a great point, and I definitely do think group selection is hugely important, and you can see some examples of that. Um, of of it's not necessarily your own. Uh, so I don't I don't know I don't know I don't have any comments about the person who would kill themselves for a selfie. Or <laughs> but you know I mean lemmings that's a 
a great example where where sacrificing the individual is good for the species. Um, I think it's particularly in the case of, you know, what parent wouldn't wouldn't do anything for their child, including risk their own life. So I think those things make a lot of sense in terms of- But for your kids, it makes a lot of sense because you're preserving the genes. Right. And in your group, well, there's the assumption that you're, they're, you're, you're, uh, there might be an assumption that the genes are similar throughout the group. So I don't know about that as much. You know, that's definitely yeah. beyond my expertise. Um, but uh, I think that's an excellent point. Awesome. Any other thoughts on sort of finding meaning? Is it sort of a big trick or do you feel that there's something to be found there as well? That's a good question. What do you mean by it's a big trick? Is it that our brains are tricking us into sort of looking for meaning or do you think that there is in fact a meaning to be found? Um, I do believe that there is meaning to be found. I do think our brains are designed to search for, you know, um, Mysteries and, and curiosities are, are things that our brains are designed to be attracted to or, or have evolved to be attracted to. Um, so I think that there is, there is real meaning and I think it can be grounded in these sort of simple truths. So I don't know that those necessarily of a reductionist behavioralist than I am a philosopher, but um, Very cool. I would say those are not mutually exclusive. I have one last question for you. So you've told me about the entire human race, but you haven't told me specifically for you. So have you found the meaning and what is the meaning for your life? That's a really good question. So, um, you know, I, I also should say that I don't study humans. I study uh, rodent brains and the very, very most, you know, sort of stripped down components of that. Um, but I would say that I do find meaning. I do find meaning in making uh, a difference in other people's lives. Um, I think the meaning that that has resonated the most with me is to feel that I've made a positive impact on the world. And for me, that almost always means um, in in other people's experiences. So I think for me, that's the the meaning that I found. Awesome. So right. thanks so much. Happy and, birthday, Manolas. Person. Thank you. Bye.